Who's heard of this term, non-functional requirements? We hear this all the time. So we're going to build systems. We build systems, usually we care about the behavior and the function of it. And those important things that architects normally have to care about get called non-functional requirements. I've got some issues with this term because I spend a lot of time building high performance systems, systems that have to be very reliable, things that have to be secure. So let's just look at the dictionary here. Non-functional, okay, we put this prefix non in front of it. First view we see, it means not, other than, absence of, like the reverse of, hang on, so it's not a function? Even worse, of little or no consequence, unimportant, worthless. So you have turned up at an architecture conference and what we do is worthless. Great start. Let's look at something else. Lacking in the usual, especially positive characteristics of the thing specified. Come on, our industry, do we not read a dictionary when we put a name on something? It's such a simple thing. Naming really, really matters. It programs behavior, it drives a lot of what we do. Our industry is full of great examples of this, like random access memory. Do we really want memory to be random in what it gives us? I want arbitrary access memory, yet but we've done that as well. Or how about maintenance? Like, does our software need greased and oiled and sort of kept alive in some way? No, it doesn't. So let's start digging into this and see what really matters here. What we're going to talk here about is the qualities of a system, the quality attributes is really what we mean when we're talking about non-functional requirements. And these become really important to see, is something fit for purpose, is it the right thing? So, simple example. I want to build a little bridge across a stream. My result could be something like that. Fit for purpose, reliable, strong, will do the job. I'm not going to be concerned about it. Wood is a great material. I don't need to have concrete in this case. But let's say my gap was bigger. Wood still may do it. And I might be a little bit scared, but that'll probably work fine. Unfortunately, a lot of software in our industry, people don't really think about it. And we ended up having software that does kind of things like this. It just about works, and we kind of get away with it. And if you were to go across this bridge, the thing you would be doing is listening really, really carefully. Because those creaks, it would get you really, really worried about whether it's going to be doing the right thing or not. Well, I find that over the years, I see listening to our software. Is it creaking? Is there different ways we can tell what's going on? This is what informs us, and it's really important.